those click boards. We're good. All right. Well, welcome everybody. Um, sorry we're running a little late today. Uh, we had a really good time of worship and uh, prayer time. Uh, I just want to encourage you guys, those that are part of our fellowship that aren't here, just to continue to lift up our fellowship in prayer, uh, specifically our senior pastor, Dad. He's uh, going through some health issues again still. and But uh, we're still claiming victory because uh, we have an awesome, victorious Lord. So um, lift us up in prayer uh, just to see the vision of the church come through and um, where we need to be and what we need to do and where we are in uh, this chaotic world and all these good things. So as you guys are coming to the screen now, and I just want to encourage you guys just to continue in prayer. That's really what we so urgently need in this day and time. So we thank you. Welcome. Sorry uh, we're late, but prayer was definitely needed this morning, so it was good. So without further ado, it comes Dad. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. And now, let's see. I would like for people who believe in prayer, and like Mike mentioned, it's very important for us to be in prayer, to reaching out to God. I'd like for you to, to pray for this church here, the New Beginnings Fellowship, but to pray for, for me also right now. The enemy is attacking me, and, and I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. I don't want to receive that, and I thank you, Lord, that you are with me. So I just uh, thank you. As we look into the words, I, I begin to, to realize that uh, how much God really loves us, of course, but the other point is that I look into the word, I begin to realize the freedom that we have in our Lord. He is so good to us. I want to talk about freedom. Freedom, hallelujah. hallelujah. Freedom that we have in this country. There was some time back, there was a, a general in the Persian army and he always gave his uh, condemned prisoners a choice. Oh, hallelujah. He always gives them a choice, uh, two choices actually, since they were condemned anyhow. So he says, you have a choice to get before the firing squad, and you have a choice to walk through that dark door over there. Well, as we looked into it, and as he looked into it, and as people looked into it, most people took the firing squad. And so he was asked later on by different people, and he, they asked him, he says, uh, all right, now what, what is this dark door that, uh, that they could walk through? What's behind that dark door? He kind of smiled and he says, well, there are very, very few people brave enough to walk through that dark door. That dark door leads to freedom. The people made the choice to rather be killed than go into freedom. Well, at the beginning of this country, many, many brave men, many brave women Choose freedom. People who recognize when they came from the foreign countries from overseas and came to this country, they recognize something else though, because they recognize that they need God in their life. And as they, they entered into the freedom July 4th, 1776, it was the, the Second Continental Congress adopted 
the Declaration of Independence. So I'm trying to uh, talk about this, so excuse me if I do a lot of reading because some of these things there, uh, I, I, let's put it this way. And most of you know about, I don't know about the audience out there, but most of the congregation know that I, I came from Germany in 1952. And then before I came, I had to go to a camp and to, to be checked out, you know, my background, all these kind of things. And they talked about learning about this country. And what I discovered is as we were taught, talked about this country, it was something that, that I desired myself. I wanted to be in a country that is, is free, has the has a opportunity to speak freely, to, uh, you have chances to, to grow, you have chances to, uh, to be, uh, well, to be free, let's put it that way, because where I came from was under communist ruling, socialism, all these kind of things. And so a lot of people, when I came to this country, I, you know, not a lot of people, but there were a few people, I should say, they were complaining about this and that in this country and all. And I thought to myself, oh, you, you people don't even realize how good you have it in this country. And as I was going uh, through uh, getting my citizenship paper for this country, because I wanted to be a citizen, I had to read about the history of this country. And I was just amazed how this country started. You know, there were people who came who willingly, practically, well, laid their life down in a way you might say, who were willingly uh, wanting to, to become independent from all those things that were going on in other countries, like where I came from also. And I realized, and those people, um, I, I can kind of um, talk about all kinds of little things here, I'm sorry about that. I just, I'm just trying to explain to you how important it is for us to, to realize the independence that we have, yes, is there, but the independence is not for us to just do your own kind of thing. So. When I, when I had to study about this country, and that was the other part, the, uh, the judge gave me a book of, of the history of this country about this thick, and I was in the military at the time. And anyhow, so, <laughs> he says, uh, read, study about that, read about it. So, whenever you think you're ready, you come. Well, I read through that book there, of course. Uh, it was impossible to remember all those things that were in there, but I, I discovered something that the Founding Fathers loved God, and they went by the Word of God. They, they just were so, how uh, can I say, they were so, uh, they loved God so much, they, they began to discover the freedom that we have as, as we allow God to rule in this country, as, as they allow God to, uh, to be the one that's in charge. And so as, as I was uh, thinking about that, and what to talk about today, I was thinking about the freedom that we have in this country and a lot of people don't realize with all this stuff going on, with, uh, trying to push socialism and, you know, and, and just, be careful, people. Don't don't fall into that trap, because this country was established in the right way. This country provides the freedom that we all can have, as we do what God asks us to do, as we follow God with all of our heart, 
just like these founding fathers did in those days. We just read something else here. The Constitution <coughs> rightly interpreted was a document based on Christian concept of sin and justice. We are all born sinners. That's what they recognized at that time. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. I'm sorry. Remember, it was fake right here. We are all born sinners. So, no one can be trusted with absolute power. This is something that these men and women discovered. That's what they, they went by, okay? This is something for people to understand that through the Word, through God, we have to recognize that we are all sinners. There's no one, no one that's better than themselves. There's no one that, that can uh, claim that, hey, I'm, I'm the one that runs this country, like a lot of foreign countries do. Because this is the thing of, of uh, let's see, how can I say this here? Okay. Okay, like I said, we're all born, they recognize that we're all born sinners, so no one can be trusted with absolute power. So the Founding Fathers circumscribed, uh, don't misunderstand that, not circumcised, circumscribed, okay? Circumscribed the freedom, the circumcised the, the leaders, I should say, with a great many checks and balances so no one group would dominate our government. This is a lot of areas in foreign countries where it's uh, one guy who runs everything and people give in to terrorism, socialism, and all that because socialism is something that will harm this country. It's sad to say this country right now is being divided. It started to be united under God. And this country is being divided because of certain people think that, that they can do better. And so again, I, I want us to, to be alert to all of that. I want us to realize, even out there as you listen to this, and maybe you don't like what I'm saying or whatever, realize that you have a good country here. Be united. This is what this country is called, United States of America. Like I said, as I was, as I was reading through the history of, his, of, of America, it's, it's something that I love, and I hope that you begin to love the country that you live in, that you want to function accordingly. And I sound like a politician maybe, but no, I just want to point out to you how this country started. It was with God being in charge, with God ruling. So the, the Constitution, as it was written, was rightly interpreted, if it was rightly interpreted, of course, was a document based on Christian concepts of sin and justice. Like I said, we're all born sinners, so no one can be trusted with absolute power. So our, our founders of this country were trained and schooled in biblical thinking. They knew the Bible to be the one infallible rule of faith and practice. They built schools so every, every man, every woman, every child could read and understand the Bible because that's what they used. They used the Word of God. 
Now the thing is, the danger of a country, of a godless government, that's what we hope we don't want to get into, right? We don't want to be under a godless government. We want to be under God. We want to go according to the word of God. You see, the government actually is, is uh, foundational to society in good or bad times because God ordained, God ordained three institutions of government. First one was the family. The second one was the church. And the third one was and still is a civil government, yes. Hallelujah. Now the Lord is the one, of course, as we see in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 9, I don't have it out right now. You can look it up yourself. Where Christ comes, where it shows us that Christ carries the government on his shoulders. And he carefully selects those who are supposed to rule and run the government. And this is something that we have to understand. This is something that God established. The family, man is in charge of the family. And if man is in charge of the family, then the family will function properly. Of course, all according to the word of God, man has to be a man of God to be able to do that. The church, the church, the same thing. The churches uh, have leadership in the church if that man is not under God himself. Not a poor leadership there. We all have to go by what God says in his word. And so should the civil government. Oh, hallelujah. Uh, let me see here. You see, the government becomes <coughs> agents, not the way, let's, let's put it this way, the dangers of, of godless government. Let me get into that. Okay? So, <laughs> the government becomes agents of immorality and unbiblical thinking. Guess what's going on in this country? Legislation that further threatens the security of, of marriage, for instance, the, def, the definition of male and female, lives of unborn, freedom of Christians to follow convictions of their faith in the public. These are some of the signs of a godless government. In the old days, the, the uh, Israelites, of course, they, they are a nation, they were a nation in those days, but in the old days, there was something in, that we, we see in the Bible, for instance, in Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 19. Let me see if I can find it here. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 19. Oh, hallelujah. Jeremiah 2 verse 19 says and this is God speaking to the Israelites of course your own wickedness will correct you and you, you and you apost apostates will reprove you know therefore and see that it is evil and bitter, and bitter for you to forsake the Lord your God. And the, the dread of me is not in you, declares the Lord of hosts. What am I saying here? The way I understand it, that if the nation does not fear God, if you 
have no no uh, idea about God. If if you don't go by what the Word of God says, well, then what happens? The people decide what is right and what is wrong, and every man does what is right in his own eyes. Jeremiah chapter five, verse twenty to twenty-nine also talks about what the Israelite what you know, the nation of, of Israel did in those days. And so, uh, let me just read some of these verses here, 20 to 29. Declare this in the house of Jacob. Do I have the right passage here? Yeah. Pro uh, okay, declare this in the house of Jacob and proclaim it in Judah, saying, Hear this, O foolish and senseless people, who have eyes but see not, who have ears but hear not. Do not fear me, declares, you do not fear me, do not, uh, you do not tremble in my presence, for I have placed the sand as a boundary for the sea, an eternal decree, so it, it seemed, uh, so it cannot cross over it. So the waves, uh, excuse me, for the waves toss, yet they cannot prevail. Though they roar, yet they cannot cross over it. But this people has a stubborn and rebellion heart. They, they have turned aside and departed. They do not say in their heart, let us now fear the Lord our God, who gives rain in the season, both the autumn rain and the spring rain, who keeps for us the appointed weeks and the harvest. Your, your iniquities have turned these away, and your sins have withheld good from you. For wicked men are found among my people. They watch like fallers lying in wait. They set a trap. They catch men. Well, anyhow, they, they are fat and, and are, are sleek. They are excellent, excel, and sleep. I can't even read right here. <laughs> I'm so sorry, people out there and here in the audience. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of uh, uh, dizzy in, in my head a little bit, so I'm uh, trying to read as much as I can. They do not defend the rights of the poor. Uh, Shall I not punish these people, declares the Lord, on a nation such as this? Shall I not avenge myself? See, God, God is talking to the Israelites, and I believe God can talk to our nation as we look into the Word of God, as we allow God to be in charge of this country. The nation's legal system becomes unjust, Legals, I uh, mean, uh, you know, nations that that do not fear God, and this country is getting into that area here. We interpret existing laws differently. We create new laws to justify greed and wickedness. There's the thing in Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. If you do not obey me, you know what will happen? <laughs> it's a curse on you. Nation's wealth, you see, well, I'm not going to read it, but you can look it up for yourself. Isaiah chapter, uh, see, where are we? No, in Deuteronomy, I should say, Deuteronomy chapter 28, 
verse 15, which is the one I just mentioned, then verses um, 43 and 44 talks about nations' wealth will be controlled by other nations. When we trusted God and his word in public schools, thought and, and moral standards, we were the richest and wonderful, blessed nation, weren't we? But when we're not, and this is as we know, other countries controlling us, other country uh, provide, you know, they, they, uh, uh, they take, they've taken over, let's put this way, our riches in this country. So this, this, these are like, like three things that uh, I found, in, for instance, Jeremiah not fearing God, uh, people decide what is right and what is wrong, their own, not fearing God. Number two is nation's, nation's legal system becomes unjust. And number three is nation's wealth will be controlled by other nations. So this is what happens to a country that does not fear God. This country was not established that way. This country was established with the word, with people who who had, uh, uh, how can I say, who had the guts to stand up for the Lord, who established what the Lord wanted to have in this country. And as many, 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 many people died and still dying for freedom of this country, many soldiers out there who give their life, many people are standing in the gap, you might say, for us to stay free in this country. The reason I'm saying all of this is because we just celebrated, of course, the 4th of July, as we all know. And it's, it's, it's something that we should remember. It's something that we should be grateful that we live in this country and we should continue to fight for the freedom in this country. We should stand up, especially as Christians, we should stand up and come against authorities who are trying to establish a country with communistic rules, socialism, and all these kind of things. And so what we have to do is when the time comes for election time, what should we do? We should pick people who honor God, who believe in God, who want to uh, be free because of God who loves us so much. We want to be free in this country to help raise our families the way this country was established. So, so having said all of that about our country, as, as you know about my, myself, I, I, I was blessed to be, and I still blessed to be in this country. Otherwise, I wouldn't apply for my citizenship. <laughs> but the point is that I love this country very much. And I want for us Christians, all believers, to realize that when the time comes for voting, and, and I'm not naming anybody, we, we pray about that, but I just want to point out to, to realize that importance of voting for those people who are willing to uh, vote for those people who are willing to, uh, to, to serve this country according to the Lord's way, not their own way. So having said all of that, then I want to get into the freedom that we as Christians have, the freedom that we as Christ followers have. Are we, are we free? Are we really free? Well, we can be, as Christians. We are free from what? First of all, realizing that we are free from bondages, like I was bondage, alcohol and smoking, and all these kind of things. The Lord set me free from that. Why? Because I go by what the Word says. And I pray that 
like the forefathers did, that they go by what, what God says in his word. And we as Christians have the opportunity to become free with ourself, we can become free from selfishness. We can become free from all kinds of bondages that we allow ourselves to be in. And the Lord is there to help us. And we are free from spiritual death because someday we will be with the Lord. And hallelujah, that we can be what the Lord wants us to be. So we, I'd say, that like, like Joy said last time, we, we are on the winning team. Yes, I love that expression. We are on the winning team. We are not called to be in fear or bondage, but to be bold and courageous. That's how this country started, to be bold and courageous. Do not be in any bondages that the enemy wants to put on us. Let's take a look at First Peter chapter two, verse nine, please. Okay, Let's see if I have it here, some place. <laughs> yeah, here we go. First Peter chapter two. Did I say two? Yeah. Huh? Verse nine. I was chapter one. No, no, it's two. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. Verse nine says there, but you are, meaning all believers, you are a what? A chosen. Okay. <laughs> But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God, for God's own presentation. Oh, hallelujah. That you may proclaim the excellences of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So hallelujah, we are what? A royal priesthood, a holy nation. Oh, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. And then also, this is the thing that the Lord calls us out of darkness, like going through that dark door, like I talked about at the beginning, coming out of darkness and getting into the marvelous light that the Lord has provided us, getting into the freedom that God has given us as we are willing to do what he asked us to do, as we are willing to lay down our lives like a lot of people did in those days and nowadays. The Lord wants us to, to become completely free in that. We are also a what? A nation. A nation of what? A holy nation. As Christians, we are a holy nation. A holy nation is so important for us to recognize because God says in John 17, verse 17 through 19. Okay, let's see if I got this one here. John 17. This John 17 is the Lord's Prayer. That's the true Lord's Prayer because this is the one where, where the Lord prays. The other prayer that we see in, in, in Matthew is the disciples' prayer. The Lord is teaching disciples on how to pray, but in my eyes, in, in John 17, this is the, the prayer of the, of the Lord praying to the Father for, for all of us. And he says here in John 17, verse 17 through 19, it says, Sanctify them in the truth. Thy word is truth. 
sanctified means being holy to be separated, okay? As thou didst send me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify, my, I, I sanctify myself that they themselves uh, also may be sanctified in truth. So we see God is, is telling us that he's praying for us that we become holy, that we get sanctified, that we get set apart. We are set apart from, from the world and God, God is saying that to praying for to the Father for us to, to become holy. Uh, it's, it's a thing of, of uh, trusting, trusting our Lord, trusting our Father to be sanctified in all of that that he has for each one of us. And so I was thinking about that, Lord, how can I talk about this today? And then I, I discovered that, well, And we are disciples of God. Well, what is what is a disciple? Do you ever think about that? What is a true disciple? A disciple is a learner. You learn from the Word of God, like our forefathers did. He's a learner, okay? Then he's a follower. He follows what he learns. He follows the Lord Jesus' teaching, of course. Oh, hallelujah. And then... You're a transmitter. You become a transmitter. You pass it on to others of what you learn and as you follow Christ. Okay, and so we've been going to a Bible study before about Matthew 5, the Sermon on the Mount, for instance. We, we talked about that uh, in more detail. So I'm just going to point out a few things here that, that uh, we discovered. So it's a, it's a thing of... of learning, following, and transmitting. And so we see that, uh, oh, hallelujah. <laughs> so we discover in Matthew chapter 5, the Sermon on the Mount, verses 1 through 16, that there are three things that we could learn from. First of all, how to develop our character, and then to conduct ourselves accordingly, and then to have influence in society. And this is what's so important for us, to have the influence in the society in a right way, that we do according to what God tells us to do. When God taught us what we accept, what we follow ourselves, so that we have, we have that, that uh, uh, influence with other people because they see how it works in our own life. They see how we live. And so the first thing that I just want to mention this quickly here, the first four things that we should learn, very important for us as Christians in order to become free and to stay free. But when we're free, the Lord wants us to be holy. He wants us to be sanctified. He wants us to, to understand the importance of being with what we're supposed to be. So we see that in Matthew chapter 5, verse 3, first of all, the very important thing of having a poor spirit. What is a poor spirit? A poor spirit, what is poor anyhow? Poor is you don't have anything, right? So when you recognize the poor spirit, and, uh, uh, well, I don't have to read it anyhow. But anyhow, so, uh, you, you can look it up yourself. <laughs> These verses, it's, probably on, on the screen behind me. But anyhow, this, the thing of the poor spirit is, this, is so important for us to realize that we are empty, we don't have any anything in us that God wants us to have. We need God in us. We are so poor, we are bankrupt according to God in God's, God's life, God's spirit. We are bankrupt without God. We don't have God's life in us. And so it's important for us to realize that, uh, that we are poor in that thing, and poor in spirit. It's uh, something that the Lord wants us to know, 
that we need him. That's why a lot of people get involved in kinds of other things because there's an emptiness in them and they, they try to fulfill themselves with all kinds of other things and get in bondages of that. And the Lord wants us to be free from all of that. He wants us to realize that we need him and that empty spot needs to be filled with him. That's, that's what, what I would say. This means being poor in spirit. In verse in chapter Matthew five verse three, and, ch and verse four says also that those who mourn, uh, there there is a uh, what does that mean to mourn? Well, it means when you you kind of uh, have pain when you kind of lose somebody. Of course, all these things may be part of it, but what it really means is it's a it's a, a brokenness that should be coming upon us, a brokenness, a repentance, a, a, a sense, a, sen a tender conscience, let's put it that way, and wanting to, uh, and, and, and uh, wanting to honor God and to do what God wants us to do, to, to walk closer with God. As, you re as we truly repent. It's one of those things that, that the brokenness will cause us. That helps us to realize we need you, Lord, in our life. We don't have anything without you. We, and we develop this kind of uh, it's, well, brokenness. <laughs> what I'm saying with all of this here is in verse 5 also is that those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. It's, it's something, a yearning to walk closer with God. And uh, let me just go on in verse, verse uh, 8 here. And uh, to, uh, to, to have a, a pure heart. Uh, one who, uh, without pretense, one who does not fake anything, one who is willing to lay down his life for the Lord. One who, uh, uh, there's, there's uh, no, no deceit there. There's no manipulation that you're seeking from God. Uh, there's undivided attention and affection and pure, pure motives from God. That, uh, that pure motives towards God, towards, towards others. Of course, these, these four things, at least, I believe, is something that we need to develop. It's the character towards God. It's the thing that, that we have to realize that as we develop that character, then we're able to conduct ourselves properly amongst other people and then we will have proper influences as we see in the other verses that we have in Matthew 5 from 1 through 16. So you, you can pick them up, but I would, I would strongly suggest that in order for you to be part of the holy nation, in order for you to be part of the royal priesthood, these are very, very important verses that we find in Matthew 5 that the Lord wants all of us to learn and to function by it so that we can be a holy nation who represents God in a proper way. That we can be blessed as this country was being blessed when people started out with the word of God and people were there for the Lord willingly laying down their lives for each one of us. The Lord wants us to lay down our lives for him also. As Christians, as followers, yes, as children of God, yes, all of those things, we should be, and we should be an example, we should have an influence in this country and in the world, of course. And so I'm, I'm going over time here, but I just want to point these, these things out to you as something that that I wrote down here that maybe I just quickly read that in closing. Well, in Romans 8, 18 through 19, I should do that one, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Romans 8, 
Romans 8, verse uh, what did that say? 18 and 19. It says there, okay. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the anxious longing of the creation waits eagerly for the revealing of the sons of God. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This is something that that the Lord wants us to realize that the whole creation is anxiously waiting to see us as the children of God, the sons of God, the daughters of God to come forth and to represent the Lord in a proper way. And these verses here that we've been going through Matthew 5 there, you, know, you can read it for yourself, study them, I would recommend it very highly that these, these verses, they, they help us to get developed Character doesn't come automatically, you've got to develop that. God doesn't give you the character automatically, you've got to develop it, you've got to work on that. These four things that I pointed out, this is part of, of your and my responsibility before God in order to really become free from all of that. And so like it says here, the creation is anxiously waiting for the sons and daughters to come forth for, for our Lord Jesus Christ. In closing, I, I wrote down a prophetic word that I read. I believe it's a prophetic word. It says that, trust me and don't be afraid. Do not be frightened by world events as, as, the, uh, as the news or, or as to, do not be frightened by world events or news reports. These reports are biased. They pre presented uh, as if I don't exist. This is God speaking through the prophetic word. News clips show tiny bits of world events from which the most important factor has been carefully removed, my presence in the world. As journalists sift through massive amounts of information they, they strain out everything about me and what I am accomplishing on this earth. Whenever your world is feeling like a scary place, turn to me and encourage yourself in my presence. You can find courage through remembering who I am. Rejoice, rejoice that you are on an adventurous journey with me and your ultimate destination is of course heaven oh hallelujah thank you lord thank you lord for helping me through this bringing your word i pray father that, that your word ministers to people not just here but also out in the audience there i thank you for putting up with me. <laughs> okay. I thank you for your word, Lord, again. I thank you. I thank you for who you are. I just ask for your bringing people to yourself, making people be aware of that we need you. We need you so badly, Lord, and that we follow you, that we learn to be your followers, that we learn to represent you to others as we ourselves become free from certain things in our life that hold us in bondage. So thank you, Lord, for all that you have done and all that you will do yet. And I release all this in your precious name. Amen and amen. Thank you for being with us. God bless you all.